Hello, astro friends, and welcome to another edition of In the Cosmos from the De Anza College Planetarium. As always, I'm your host, Toshi Komatsu, the director of the Planetarium, and today brings us to the end of our four-part series on the Moon, and we'll put links to the first three parts in the description below. This time, we'll explore the ecliptic from space. Now, to recap, the Moon follows a particular path in the sky, and this path is close to the imaginary line known as the ecliptic. Now, the planets follow the ecliptic as well, but to find out why, we need to study the ecliptic from space. From here in space, we see Earth in its orbit around the Sun. And what we see as a line on Earth is actually a geometric plane defined here by Earth's orbit. But let's focus on Earth and compare the ecliptic to the Moon's orbit. Now, as we get closer here, we'll be taking a look at a localized version of the ecliptic, which you can see here. And you can also see the moon and its orbit. And notice that the moon's orbit is not quite in the same plane as the ecliptic plane. As we tilt our view here, you can see that the tilt of the moon's orbit is off the ecliptic by about 5 degrees. And because it's tilted, that means sometimes we find the moon above the ecliptic, but other times we'll find the moon below the ecliptic. At two points, though, the moon's orbit intersects the plane of the ecliptic. And if this intersection point happens at a new moon or a full moon, then we get an eclipse. As we have said in previous videos, one complete orbit of the moon takes about a month or four weeks. So that means two weeks later, the moon is going to be on the other side of the, its orbit, intersecting the plane directly opposite where it was before. This is why eclipses come in pairs. Now, if this intersection happens at a, first at a full moon, like we saw on May 26th, we get a lunar eclipse. So going back in time to take a look and see what that looks like, in our view here, the sun is behind us and we see the earth and the moon there. And if we zoom in on the moon, we see that the moon is actually falling within Earth's shadow. And because of all the sunsets and sunrises happening simultaneously around that planet, the color of the shadow of Earth is actually red, which is why the moon turns this blood red color here. Now, two weeks later, we had a solar eclipse. Again, this happens when the moon has moved along in its orbit to the other side, the other intersection point here. And here you can see the alignment of we've got Earth here, then the moon, and the sun off in the distance. And again, if we zoom in to move past the Earth so that the Earth moves behind us and we keep the moon in front of us, we'll see that on this date, on June 10th, the moon was directly in front of the sun here. And if we back away to look at the entire solar system, we'll see that the orbits of the planets, they all fall more or less in line with the plane of the ecliptic. As seen from Earth, that means that all the planets will appear close to the ecliptic in the sky, but usually a little bit above or a little bit below. Again, you can see that the orbits of the planets, they line up almost perfectly with this ecliptic plane, but not quite perfectly. Again, sometimes a little bit above or a little bit below. Well, that's it for this episode of In the Cosmos and for our mini-series on the moon. Thank you to Richard Levin for the original question, what should we cover next? Please let us know in the comment section below. Until next time, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and keep an eye on our social media for more astronomical observing tips. Links to all of that will be in the description below. And as always, this is the De Anza College Planetarium wishing you clear and dark skies. And this is us, signing off for now.